A traditional dance-off in the dust and the Barunga Festival turns 30. The festival's founder, a former Barunga school principal, sings with a new generation of children. and reflects on some unfinished business. To get straight to the point, we're still waiting for our treaty that Bob Hawke spoke about 30 years ago. The promise was made at the Barunga Festival in 1988 when Bob Hawke was given a statement calling for national land rights and recognition of Indigenous language and culture. There shall be a treaty between the Aboriginal people and the government on behalf of all the people of Australia. Barunga resident Jamie Arfat was there in 1988. He's lived in Barunga for most of his life and for years has helped put together the festival's cultural program. Really, really important. If we don't continue it, it will die off and we don't know where we go from there on and we'll probably lose our identity. But I really feel strong that we need to hold it. It's sort of slipping away from us. Barunga began as a sports carnival, but the sharing of Indigenous music and culture is now at its heart. Activities like weaving, uh, bush medicine making, um, selling our products, printed shirts. Barunga started, you know, 30 years ago, and it's it's been going strong, you know, ever since. Everyone, you know, everyone from Australia gets gets here somehow. You know, you find people that you haven't seen for 20 years, you come to Barunga, you find them. Barunga in words means that it's a happy place for families to come and live and relate to one another and learn of one another. More than 3,500 people have passed through Barunga's gates this weekend, no doubt leaving with a sense of the positive aspects of remote community life. Felicity James, ABC News, Barunga.